Hi there. This is the sixth episode of the Brain Power Seminar. In this series, we're looking at principles of how to improve your brain power. We've looked at 10 times wiser, the real mind, what causes a muddled mind. We looked at uh, the power crisis in the brain and also the power supply to the brain. In this um, episode, we're going to look at shaping your thoughts. Now, just to recap a little bit of what we've done, I need to remind you where I come from. In, uh, on 26 November 1997, I was diagnosed with cancer. I was only 34 years old when uh, I contracted this uh, disease, and uh, I only had six months to live. By God's intervention and a change of lifestyle, God has given me a second chance, and I'm grateful to be able to share these principles with you. Really changing my lifestyle has helped me to expand my brain capacity in the same process. What a wonderful God we have. Now, in summary, I want to take you back to the previous episode. How to empower your brain to have that constant, slow-release energy level that you need right throughout the day. And uh, number one that we found is that you need to eat an adequate breakfast. When we talk about an adequate breakfast, we say have a whole grain porridge. Um, you could have some whole grain bread. Look at this beautiful bread um, baked, from, uh, uh, baked in the oven. And you can do this at home. Uh, you could um, have some good fruit. Look at this beautiful apple. This is really the, the, the things that we need on a daily basis. And if you have an adequate breakfast, your blood sugar levels would stay stable right throughout the day. We also found that uh, you should not eat between meals. This is a very important principle. Only eating at meal times. When I, st when I finished my meal, two hours later I might have some water or juice to drink, but I'm only going to eat when I get to the next meal time. We also found that you should eat less than three meals per day. This would really be the best thing that you could ever do for yourself is try and not eat more than three meals a day. I'm personally on a two meal a day diet for the last 15 years. And I must say I've got more energy than ever before. I've got more vigor of mind than ever before. There's great advantages of making these good decisions. And then the fourth principle of empowering your brain is uh, exercise. You're doing exercise on a regular basis. We're talking about about 30 minutes, six days a week. And we also said that, you know, you need to start it slowly if you're not, uh, you know, in a program and build it up. Go for longer time. Go for more intensity. You could only use a step and that would give you about, you know, 10 minutes of that would give you the same uh, calorie burning like uh, 30 minutes of, of brisk walk. So start exercising. And then we, we, we looked at drinking enough water. We looked at the principle of being well hydrated right through the day. And uh, this would give you really the cutting edge of, of brain capacity. Now, let's get to this episode's uh, topic, shaping your thoughts. Very important um, little discussion we're going to have. But I'll need to take you to Proverbs 16, verse 3, before we start. And uh, this is really about establishing our thoughts, isn't it? The word says, commit your works to the Lord. Commit your works to the Lord. And your thoughts will be established. I, I love the scripture. And really explaining to us, if we would commit whatever we do, and that could be our eating, our drinking, if I would commit that to the Lord, he will establish our thoughts. He will really direct us in the way we should think, in the way we should act, in the way we should do. Now, there's some brain facts that we, we should share today. And um, one of them is that 60% of the solids of our brain consists of fat. So it's very important that we have the right sort of fats in our diet that would even be assisting, keeping the shape of our brain um, 
where, where it lies there in our skull. This fatty jelly-like substance, the brain, would crumble if I touch it. Uh, so it's a very sensitive, delicate organ. To understand the, the whole concept of, of shaping our, our brain, our thoughts, we need to go to the essential fatty acids. And we'll refer to this in this episode as EFAs, essential fatty acids. Now, you see, the body uh, requires some, some fat. The non-essential fatty acids, the body can manufacture, ma manufacture itself. So it is there. It is in the body. And it would use it as it needs it. But the essential fatty acids, the body cannot manufacture. Diet dictates that we should have it, getting it through our diet, what we eat, and those fats will actually help to build our cells, build our body cells. Now, let's build this framework of, of the brain a little bit as we expand. Shaping your brain and your brain cells. E uh, essential fatty acids, EFAs, are very important for our entire brain, not for only the frontal lobe. We've been focusing on the frontal lobe a lot, but not only the frontal lobe, our whole brain, very, very important. We need to remember that 60% of our brain is fat, and there's even small amounts of saturated fat that helps to keep this brain in shape. We get this idea that we shouldn't have saturated fats in our, in our diet. Well, it is true, but there is some needed. And what fats, the source of this, would make a big difference. And that's what we need to look at um, in, in this episode. Now, all plant foods contain a variety of fats, including a very small amount of saturated fats. They are classified into three family groups. And let's go and look at these three family groups uh, in this session. Each group is very important. I don't want you to hear me say uh, that one is more important than that one. I need you to know that each one of them are very, very important. Each group has many individual functions, and those functions are very important to our system. The first one we want to look at is omega-3s. And uh, then we need to look at omega-6 and omega-9s. We need all three of them in a very nice balance to get to the right, to the right end result. Now, omega-3s are polyunsaturated. Uh, linolenic acid is, is really very important. It's part of it. And there's then omega-6s, basically the same. And uh, then we've got the omega-9s, the monounsaturated um, base of omega-9s. Just give you some notes about fats that would interest you. You know, there was such a, a time where we, we started using canola instead of sunflower because we recognized that there were some problems with too much omega-6s that we find in, in um, sunflower. Canola is one of the most easily damaged oils. It means canola should not be heated. The oil should not be heated. You should not fry things in canola oil. You could use it as a salad dressing. That would work well. Olive oil is one of the most damage-resistant oils. It, uh, it has um, uh, natural antioxidants. It helps it prevent damage when it is heated. So I would really recommend that you would rather go for the olive oil to, to replace sunflower oil and all the others. And... Uh, one of the biggest reasons is the change that it undergoes, the molecule change that it undergoes when it is heated up. Our, our best bet would be the olive oil. Fish oil contains no natural antioxidants. And so some people supplement with uh, omega-3s, for instance, that is derived from, um, from fish oil. There's no guarantee that fish oil that has been encapsulated has not become damaged. We have found by tests that uh, right inside of that capsule, the oil has been oxidized already. So it, it, it tends to be the best to go for the, for the source 
of the omegas. And we will get that in the plants that we're going to share with you today. Now the big question is, what type of omegas are you using um, in your diet? Which one is most dominant in your diet? And uh, we're going to really take our binoculars and zoom in and see what this is. And let's look at the list of, of omegas that, that, that we find available in the foods that we should eat. Now, when we look at omega-3s, we find uh, omega-3s in linseed, we could also call it flaxseed, canola, soya, fish oil, dried beans, wheat germ, seaweed, pumpkin seeds, walnuts, almonds, avocados, bananas, spinach, dark green leafy vegetables, sweet potato, turnips, cucumber, all of these with the skin on would, would really give me the best source of omega-3s. Then the omega-6s, let's look at that list. Sunflower, sesame, soya, corn, that's mealies, dried beans, peanuts, linseed, pumpkin seeds. And you would even notice that there is some of these that overlap. There's omega-3s, omega-6s, and even, even omega-9s in, in some of them. Let's look at omega-9. And uh, the list says that it's olives, almonds, avocado, pumpkin seeds, sesame, canola, macadamia, nuts. Those are, are high in omega and omega nines. Now, each one of these family groups goes through little changes inside of the cell. And uh, we're going to use this step diagram to really explain this. The omega uh, threes, high in uh, linolic, uh, uh, linolenic acid, and um, that changes into EPA. Uh, very important change. And there's a function of in each one of these changes in the cell. And that changes again to DHA and EPA. And the e DHA and the EPA changes in the cell to PGE3. And it has an anti-inflammatory action right there on the cell. Now, very important. Each change is functional. We, we need each one of these. Very, very important. But what we sometimes forget is the changes, the cascades, will only take place in the correct way if we have a good, wholesome, nutritional um, content of meals. If we're going to have uh, nutritional fam famine by not having the right uh, nutritional values, these cascades cannot take place. The final step in the cell has a profound effect on that cell. And this is why we need to show you to this anti-inflammatory action that it has in the cell. Very, very important that we, that we understand this. Now, the omega-3s, the last action in the cell would be anti-inflammatory. However, look at the omega-6s. The last action for a, uh, a predominantly omega-6 diet will be inflammatory. And then once again, the omega-9s would be anti-inflammatory. It would have that effect on the cell. Now, some people, you know, do believe and uh, they, 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 they make us, you know, try and believe that DHA is only found in fish. And so that we should have fish in our diet. Well, what we find now in our latest research is that DHA is actually derived from EPA. And EPA is in our food, if we would have enough minerals and vitamins in a good variety of food, it would actually get it there and it could then change it to the EP3 that we need in our, in our body. So DHA is not only derived from the fish that we would get. It is a very high source of DHA, but we have the problem that by the time we take it in, many times it's oxidized already. So if you are getting sufficient vitamins and minerals, your EPA will be turned into DHA and you don't have a problem. So people on a total plant-based diet would not have a challenge if they have a good variety of food of having too little 
um, a substance to really make the DHA. We get EPA in plants, and if you eat that good diet, you will find it there. Now, the question is, what are you eating? Are you eating predominantly uh, omega-3 or a 6 or a 9 uh, diet? And uh, let's, let's look at that. Let's give you an idea what happens when we have a predominantly omega-6 diet. We find that there's inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis because of a high omega-6 diet. Also inflammatory bowel disease, spastic colon, col uh, Crohn's disease. All of these inflammatory diseases because of the high omega-6 and low omega-3. They should really be in a balance. We also find new diseases like lupus and psoriasis. Very, very unfortunate that more and more cases of these are reported because of our um, Western uh, lifestyle that dictates that we have a high omega-6 diet. And then asthma and allergies, hay fever. These are all uh, very, very closely associated with, with high omega-6 diet. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, very, a lot of cases, more cases on a daily basis reported being diagnosed with, with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. We also see the same with bipolar disorder. And uh, once again, it is because of the inflammatory condition of the cells. Type 1 diabetes, the same thing. Science is now very clear that the onset of, of this is because of the inflammation in the cells. The increase of, of, of blood stickiness and clotting. And this is why more and more people need to use uh, medication to thin the blood. And... Um, we find uh, that if we would increase the omega-3s, so lower the omega-6s to get them balanced, that this problem actually is sorted out uh, without a problem. And then high omega-6s also causes water retention. We, we need to remember that, that uh, if we have the balance, our system would actually know what to do with what, and water would actually be let out in, instead of keeping it back. Um, omega-6 is high, also causes raised blood sugar levels. It causes vasoconstriction, and that means the arteries are really narrowed down. It's constricted in a, in a way, and that would build up your, your blood uh, pressure as well. It also causes muscle spasms. Um, so if we would lift omega-3s, low omega-6, get them in balance, we would find that you would have not have those sort of problems. Let us show you what would happen if I would have a predominantly omega-3 diet. And uh, very interesting, it really does thin the blood. Now, in a problem where, where more and more people have too thick a blood, um, this is good news because if you would lift omega-3s to get the balance, you would see that the blood um, viscosity actually um, goes down. It also causes vasodilation, that means the arteries goes is, is opened up, and um, that's really good news for people with, with vascular problems and, and, and heart problems and so on. It reduces inflammation. We've got an inflammatory disease problem in our society today. When we go to the doctor, we will be diagnosed with one or other inflammation. It's because our diet is not balanced when it comes to our omegas. It elevates mood. So when somebody's down, we need to just extend or, or increase our omega-3 in our diet, the mood will change. It reduces depression. Very interesting. And then, wow, interesting. Attention deficit hyperactivity and autism is improved by a higher omega-3 diet. And very important, this is now really coming home to this, to this how to improve the brain. The neurotransmitter balance and reception is improved. This means that I am going to think faster and better with better omega-3 balances in my diet. It improves sleep. It helps to balance hormones. Ladies, really, you don't have to struggle um, so much if you could just get those balances right and the hormones would settle themselves. It reduces insulin resistance. 
very, very interesting. It improves intelligence. Coming back, back home to the brain again, it improves my intelligence. So what we would like you to, to know is that if I have the right balances of omega-3s, I'm really picking up even my, my intellectual properties very, very drastically. And uh, we're going to give some recipes in our next episodes of really how I should use this in the right quantities. Better cognitive performance I'm going to find with, uh, with this. It slows mental decline and it also reduces aggression. Even little children, if we find they're very aggressive, we would just make sure that this balance is right and we would see a big difference in our children's attitude and uh, their aggressiveness. Now, I need to, to just step away a little bit further and give you the impact of the EFAs on the immune system. Now, this picture is not a new one. I think we have shared it with you before, but uh, I want to recap and say that macrophages attacks a cancer tumor in this picture. We need to know that our immune system is made of these um, macrophages. This is one of the uh, little white blood soldiers that protects us, and they can only work if they can talk well to each other. And this is really what we need to, to, um, to lift out. White blood cells talk to each other. It's like, you know, having an army. We've got a whole body full of little soldiers, and they protect every cell. And uh, I, w I might walk down the street and, you know, barefoot, you know, summer, and bump my, my toe against a rock, and it might be bleeding, and the road is dirty, and there might be some infection coming in there. I am safe if my white blood cells are intact and working together. Now, Many of us, we've got a lot of white blood cells, nothing wrong with them, but they don't talk to each other. This talking results from chemicals produced using omega-3s, mostly omega-3s and omega-6s. So they cannot talk if there's a low omega-3 in my, in my diet. And uh, we know that all cells communicate with one another. They need to talk. Now, it's like bumping my toe, and this white blood cell picking up, there's a problem because there's infection starting. And he uses his walkie-talkie and he says, comrades, comrades, come in. There's a problem here on the left toe. Come and protect. And uh, the, the message doesn't come out clear like I've just said it. It comes out, comrade, come, come to, to the toe. And the soldiers run, but they run to not the left toe, the right toe. This whole process of getting this cells protected and my body protected is going to be prolonged by this communication not working well. This is a picture of a single neutrophil engulfing an anthrax bacteria. Very important for our immunity that uh, um, for our immunity that omegas really work well. Now low omega-3s but high omega-6s is going to cause my blood cells, white blood cells, there's enough of them but that they might, might not be able to communicate well. It's like the hawkie-talkie's battery that is flat. Or they may pass on a, a message and it's the wrong message, saying go to the right toe instead of the left toe, or the left toe instead of the right toe. And it's no wonder that our bodies are really imploding on us. Every day we hear more and more cases of people that are diagnosed with some or other inflammatory disease and it's because we have this western lifestyle where we don't get the balances that that we need now this is really the the background to the omega-3 6 and 9s the the essential fatty acids when we go to our next episode we're going to look at this good cop bad cop situation because, you know, you might have heard, all right, you know, the bad one here is omega-6s and the good one here is omega-3s. The fact is, we need both of them. Both of them are actually good cops, but the one can tend to be a little bit, bit bad, but we need that balance at the end of the day. And so we're going to look in our next episode at, you know, what can we do 
to change it. So what recipes can we use? What sort of things can we use to change this so that we could have more and better brain power? But we're also going to look at how we can determine if I have a shortage or not. So we're going to really focus and zone in on that with our, with our next session. I need to, I need to end off with a, with a beautiful uh, verse that I really take to heart. And uh, it's found in 3 John 1 verse 2. And I want you to read this with me. This is, a, this is like, a, like a prayer to, to me as a Christian. Beloved, in regard to all things, I pray that you will prosper and that you will be in physical health, even as your soul prosper. I don't know what you see in this verse, but when I looked at it the first time, and it took me a second time and a third time, and I really honed in on it, I saw something very interesting. God is not only interested in my soul's prosperity, but He's also interested in my physical health. You see, little decisions that I can make on a daily basis will determine or give me the outcome if I am going to be physically healthy as my soul prospereth. Now, let's take the challenge today and make that decision in our own lives to say, I want to not only prosper in soul, but I want to prosper in health. As you make these decisions, may God bless you and may it expand your your, your thoughts and your brain capacity to such an extent that you would glorify God's name more than ever before. Until next episode, may you be blessed. We see you again.